Hello everyone, and welcome back to Red Embrace Hollywood. I don't remember if I ever said that I am on version 1.5.16, I think it's what's called? It hasn't updated in like, a month, so hopefully I'm still good. <laughs> but uh, hi, that's where I am. <laughs> so if you're interested in what has happened in the previous parts, I have a playlist. If you want to buy the game and experience it yourself, I'll have links in the description to the Steam and to the itch.io page. And if you want to support the devs in another way, I'll have their Patreon link in the description as well. What happened last time? Oh, we shared our feelings with Randall. Romantic feelings with Randall. We kissed. It was great. I'm guessing we're in the climax now. And I'm freaking in it. I don't know how long we have. Hopefully I'll just get through it fine. Hopefully I'll get an ending that's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm so worried. But let's get into it. A faint drip echoed from somewhere inside the garage. It filled my ears as I walked along, my thoughts drifting absently. I was on my way back from my last mission. Sharice has sent me to blow up an old storage facility? What? What? <laughs> Some upstart vampire in Ascari who defected to Randall's side was using the place to hide weapons. What? No. <laughs> oh, how is that gonna look? She sent me out alone so I had dutifully blown it up or purposely sabotaged my own explosives. <laughs> We're in it! We're with Mavar! I said it last time, we're in it! I can't, I can't do it, I can't. Purposely sabotage my own explosives. <laughs> I planted the explosives inside, but sabotaged them carefully. That way, if Sharice sent another agent to see why the facility hadn't exploded, I could pretend someone tampered with it after I left. Now I was just on my way back to the hotel, taking a shortcut through the parking garage. With my luck, I'd arrive with time to spare and have the rest of the night to myself. A few weeks had passed since the night on the beach with Randall. I'd been so busy traveling around LA on various assignments that I hadn't gotten much time to see him. Now and then I managed to sneak out to the beach where we'd find somewhere private to hold each other, sharing kisses in the comfort of our embrace. Oh. I feel it now. We're definitely like getting into that point of like, it's gonna go to shit. <laughs> Probably. We always talked about what we'd do when the war ended. Planning our vacations, projects, and many other dreams. But somewhere in Randall's voice, I always felt like there was a hint of doubt. With the war at its current state, I understood his feelings. Because I felt them too, in a way. The garage was unnervingly quiet. All I could hear was the sound of my own footsteps and the droning hum of the fluorescent lights overhead. I never figured out who kept these lights on, or if some electrical company had just never bothered to shut them off. Somewhere far above me, thunder rumbled outside, announcing a storm that might have already arrived. Just another calm night as a vampire in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as I approached the staircase that would lead me outside, something made me freeze. I felt a presence nearby. Oh my god. It was approaching me from the staircase. And from above. Can't I catch a break for one night, or find somewhere to hide? Should I hide? It could be a meeting that's happening. They can sense me, I can't hide my shit. <laughs> I'm too- I'm too baby to be hiding my presence. So they- they know I'm here, if I sense them. You know what, can't I catch a break for one night? My disgruntled mutter, while cathartic, didn't do anything to stop the oncoming footsteps. A moment later, a different rumble started to echo from above. The sound of a car engine. This was a chance encounter or a friendly visit. I was being ambushed. Uh, I should have just hit. 
Over there, get him. He's probably trying to run away, just like I said he would. What? Oh my god. The stairway door flew open, letting out a group that rushed towards me. Or is it the hunters? Almost that- no, it's a presence. We could- it's vampires. <laughs> I'm just like, ah. What is background information? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> okay, I gotta know. Almost simultaneously, a large black car pulled around the corner, angling itself to block my path. Within seconds, I found myself being surrounded. Oh. But almost all of the presents I felt weren't vampires. They were humans, so it's hunters? Wait! We want to talk to him first. Who are you? <laughs> Two figures push through the group, swaggering towards me. Something about the woman seems strangely familiar. No, she was definitely familiar. I'd seen her in the hotel lobby, angrily shouting at the desk clerk. She must have been an Iskari. I didn't recognize the man, but he had the normal air of a Mavar. Only ten times more bloodthirsty. So, are you going to kill me? Or- well, this is gonna be good. <laughs> so, are you gonna kill me? Yeah, we're here to get rid of the fucking problem. Cool! We're ready to go back to how things were before you showed your ugly face here. Okay? The Mabar snarled eagerly at me, almost salivating like a mad dog. We're not here to kill you though. Great, am I like kidnapping? Kidnapping happening? Flashing me a delighted smirk, the Iskari motioned to the group surrounding me. These guys, they're hunters, and we made a deal with them to hand you over. What? So I was both wrong and right at the same time? They're both is <laughs> like just vampires and hunters, and now I'm just. Oh, uh, great, cool. Cool, great, great, cool. They're really interested in all the juicy vampire secrets you know about. And they're gonna have a great time dragging them out of you. Cool, I've got. Did I get a bad end? Cool. How can you just betray your own kind, or why are you targeting me? Why are you, why are you targeting me? Are you joking? No. He's definitely joking. God, I hope so. I don't know what I'm doing. She let out a sharp laugh, rolling her eyes in disgust. This chick and I, normally we hate each other's guts. Cool. But we hate your fucking guts even more, even if she doesn't hate you for the right reasons. The two exchanged glances, returning their hateful stares to me a moment later. It's pretty obvious you're helping the rebels, or pretending to anyway. Are you doing it for attention? To feel like you're needed, or what? Or maybe you just don't care if the other Iskari get killed. Because we're not special like you. I don't- I just want everyone to be friends, but that doesn't look like it's gonna happen. And I already said, like, if something's gonna happen between, like, Charisse and Randall, I'll pick Randall. I just- uh, I don't know what's happening, it's so hard. <laughs> It's not like that, I just agree with the rebel cause or why should I be responsible for other Iskari or houses don't mean anything, I'm not like the rest of you guys. Why should I be responsible? That doesn't seem right either. I don't know what to pick. Houses don't mean anything. Isn't this like a thing that we said in the beginning? It doesn't matter what house I'm in, what matters is who I am. I'm not sure if this is gonna be a shitty answer. Oh god. Houses don't mean anything, I'm not like the rest of you guys. Yeah, you're not. You're a monster. Every word coming out of your mouth makes me happier that you're gonna die. Great. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Laughing. Evil laughing. Oh, just kill me. Bad end! Kill me now! Listen, who cares? He's gonna be dead at the end of the night because karma's a bitch. As if on cue, the hunters impatiently shifted around me, muttering to themselves. From what it sounded like, they were going to force me along in the car nearby. Come on, let's get this shit over with. I want to see him squirm. Agreed. Go on, humans. Take him already. I have one last question for you. Because I always ask questions. My heart is beating so fast. I probably got a bad end. <sighs> oh yeah? Well, spit it out already. How would it feel if you were in my place? Do you really think this is the right thing to do? This could probably change how my ending is going to go right now. And I don't know what to pick. <laughs> This isn't gonna do anything. I don't feel like- this- none of these probably aren't gonna do anything. 
Do you really think this is the right thing to do? Of course it is. Never doubted it for one. The next moment, right as I blinked. Whoa, what happened? Suddenly the Mavar heads was gone. What? Suddenly the Mavar's head was gone. The only thing left was an empty bleeding stump. A circular saw blade lay on the ground just past his body, next to his severed head. Dude. Dude! Ah! The girl shrieked, stumbling back from the Mavar's corpse. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? A second huge blade whizzed past, slicing one of the hunter's arms in half. My, my. Ah. Yeah, they're screaming happy. Cool. <laughs> where, where? Where is it coming from? I don't. Shit, no, no, please. I'm so bad at doing this, like. <laughs> With his seconds, chaos and panic streaks filled the garage. Everywhere I looked, blood splattered the floor. Limbs and chunks of flesh falling in red pools. All the hunters were wildly firing their guns, trying to hit the unseen attacker. One of them turned to run, racing for the exit. Until a switchblade bored, bored through his back, toppling him to the ground. Take cover, try to rescue some type of hunters. Uh, you know what? This is a shit show. <laughs> I'm gonna take cover. Fuck y'all! Y'all were gonna kill me! Fuck you! Not wanting to be the next victim, I dived behind an old car, huddling to the ground. All around me, I heard the hunter's panicked screams, abruptly cut off by wet slicing sounds. Whatever the attacker was, it wasn't showing them any mercy. The bloodbath didn't take much longer to finish. Before long, all the hunters were dead, their bodies littering the concrete. My god, the only vampire who'd escaped was this Kari. She dashed away as fast as her legs could take her, disappearing around the corner and not looking back. As her footsteps faded away, I was left alone again, surrounded by a sea of mangled corpses. But in the eerie, too peaceful silence that followed, I heard the stairway open and close. Follow the attacker, run away as fast as I can. <sighs> I want to see who it was. Follow the attacker. The sound had to be the mysterious attacker leaving. Knowing that this would be my only chance to see them, I sprinted for the stairs, slamming the door open. There wasn't any normal vampiric scent for me to follow. It was something strange. Alien. Still, I heard footsteps climbing above me, so I heard desperately for them. When I reached the surface, I didn't see anyone at first. Until I glanced down the alley, just in time to glimpse a tall, dark-haired figure stalking into the street. I followed him as quickly as I could, rushing out of the alley. Out on the main road, a huge crowd was gathering for some kind of celebrity event. The man must have disappeared into the bustling throngs of people, because I couldn't see him anywhere. In that crowd, there was no way I'd be finding him anytime soon. His presence was just so hard to pin down, like it belonged to a ghost, or something else I couldn't even comprehend. Who it was. Disappointed, I ended up hailing a cab, riding back to the hotel, even with the. <laughs> it's fine, I can read! Disappointed, I ended up hailing a cab, riding back to the hotel with even more questions in my mind. Some flecks of blood, both from the hunters and the vampires from the smell of it, had landed on my face and clothes. The taxi driver gave me a funny look, but he didn't seem to be freaked out as he probably should have been. Maybe it wasn't his first time seeing a passenger like me. <clears throat> yeah, this is shit show. I hate it. By the time I reached the hotel, I felt a little more composed. It was difficult to process what happened. Both for me and the hotel clerk who stared at me open mouthed as I arrived. I must be like covered in blood. <laughs> Um, don't, don't ask. Miss Locke would like to speak with you on the phone. 
boy, do I have a story to tell her. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. After quickly dialing up the number, the clerk handed me the receiver. On the second ring, a voice picked up. Antonio, is that you? What on earth happened? You should have been back some time ago. I heard a touch of worry in her voice. I was attacked on my way back, or I was just having a nice chat with some fans. I was attacked on my way back. By whom, exactly? Oh, for heavens, go on, just tell me everything. At Sharice's frustrated command, I explained what had happened in the parking garage. She listened silently, and I could almost hear the deep creases knitting on her brow. When I finally finished, she let out a long sigh. The following clink, probably Sharice taking off her glasses. The following clink, probably Sharice taking off- that's a little- that's a weird sentence. You seem to have remarkable talent for attracting the worst sort of attention. I know. If one of your attackers escaped, I've no doubt news will spread like wildfire, so be prepared for any rumors drifting about. And the individual who rescued you is nearly just as worrying. Have you any idea who it was? I'm not sure, but they seemed incredibly strong, or- No, but it must have been someone who knew me. I'm not- I'm not sure, but they seemed incredibly strong. <clears throat> I don't want to give it away, like, if it's gonna, like, make her try to look for this person, because I'm- This person did their thing, they left, they didn't let me follow them, they're doing their own thing. If later on they try to kill me, that's my- that's on me, but, like, right now, just leave them alone. <laughs> it certainly sounds that way. Slaughtering a group of hunters is no easy task, even for a powerful vampire. She excelled another sigh, sounding as resigned as she did confused. Well, regardless of your mysterious savior, you'll have to be on high alert from now on, Antonio. I doubt most of LA's vampires feel so passionate about you, but after tonight, we can't ignore the possibility. I don't know what I did to get them so worked up, or maybe you should get a bodyguard. I don't know what I did to get them so worked up. What did I do? Fuck everything up? It's like, ever since you came along, everything's fucked up, and I'm like, I'm just being me! <laughs> Which is apparently sticking my nose in everyone's business. No, I don't know what I did to get them so worked up. Take my word for it, Antonio. People don't require much provocation to get worked up. Great, for all I know, I could have just been sitting at the wrong bench. Even if you accidentally shake their view of the world, they'll take it as a grave personal offense. As if you threatened their very existence. Great, cool. Consider curbing your behavior, assuming you don't want to deal with more attacks every night. After clearing her throat poignantly, Sharice paused for a moment. I'm out of the city right now on business, but I'll be back at the hotel tomorrow. We'll discuss things further then. Do try and stay alive until I've returned. I will and you do the same, or I don't go down easily, or no promises. I will, and you should do the same. Indeed. Our times haven't come yet, Antonio. I still worry for her, like, even though I said to Randall, like, if it's between you and her, I'll, I'll pick you. But at the same time, I don't want anything bad to happen to her. <laughs> Even though uh, she does things so weird. I'm so conflicted. I'm, I'm so, like, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. But that, she abruptly hung up. I handed the phone back to the anxious looking clerk, who offered me a temporary change of clothes. Again. By the time I've gotten the blood off my face and hair, there were still a few hours until sunrise. I had time to venture out into the city again if I felt brave enough. Going to the beach. We're going to the beach. Beach house. I had my driver take me to Santa Monica, deciding to stop by Randall's place. Even though it seems like a bad idea now that I think about it. Take me back! Wait, I didn't think about this right. Don't kill me. A large crowd was gathering inside, filling the air with the chatter of excited voices. Everywhere I looked, vampires were clustered tightly together like a hive of buzzing bees. But amidst the swarm of Mavar, I saw a strangely solitary figure by the sliding door. Randall. Talk to Randall, talk to Randall, talk to Randall! Ah! Randall! I stepped over to the door where the Mavar were giving Randall an unusually wide berth. Maybe he had asked to be alone for a little while. When I got close, he didn't seem to notice me at first. Until finally his head jerked up. 
Hello. Antonio. Before I knew what was happening, Randall's powerful arms had suddenly grabbed me into a hug. What's happening? Did you hear- Oh my god, he probably heard that an attack happened and I probably died. He lifted me off the ground, burying his face against my neck. In the next moment, Randall roughly pressed his lips to mine. It felt less romantic than desperate, as if he were trying to reassure himself that I was alright. Did you hear? Finally, he let me go. After I heard what happened, I... I was fucking terrified. I knew you were tough, but fuck. I kept thinking of all the awful shit they could have done to you. You're okay, right? I'm sure you're shaken up, but... It was terrifying. I didn't know if I was going to make it out of there. Or, I think so. But now I've seen you, at least. Or, never felt better in my life. It takes way more than that to shake me up. I, I, I just wanted to see him. Yeah, I think so. Better now that I've seen you, at least. Randall. I'm glad I can make you feel better, at least. Randall sighed, running a hand through his messy hair. Well, if you're alright, then that's a big weight off my shoulders. If you want, we can talk about something else. Get your mind off things. I get if you're not up for it, though. About yourself? I uh, kind of shared everything I want to talk about right now. No offense, but even a guy like me has to have a private life. About someone else? What about Andre? You don't want to talk about it? Okay, something happened? <laughs> as soon as I mentioned Andre's name, Randall went rigid, his teeth clenching. Don't ever fucking trust anything that guy tells you, Antonio. Okay. All I'm gonna say is that he's a cold, evil bastard. Scares me more than Charisse does. About something else? Something that happened. <clears throat> Did you ever find out who your shooter was? No. We've got bigger things to worry about, like keeping on our toes for the war. I don't think they'll try and shoot me again, but if they do, I'll be ready this time. I met this guy who lives in the sewers, Lazarus. Lazarus, huh? Not ringing any bells, sorry. Though I didn't know the sewers were a real estate hotspot. Wish I could tell him. That's all for now, I think. Alright. I'm real glad you came to see me, Antonio. He raised out a hand, softly trailing his fingers through my hair before grasping my shoulder with a gentle squeeze. Be careful out there because, well, until the war's over. Anything could fucking happen. As we parted ways, I felt Randall's gaze still on my back, following me closely. Holy shit. Let's go to Marcus next. <laughs> It's been a while! Marcus! Slipping out of the beach house, I made my way back towards the sand. La 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 la. It's blood and roses, yeah? I never went to the abattoir, and I'm probably never gonna go to the abattoir in this playthrough. <laughs> my bad. Blood and roses. Let's see if he's there today. If he's not in the It's been a while since I've seen him. I wandered over the counter where Marcus was hunched over, scribbling something on a postcard. Hello. Ah, Antonio! He lifted his head to gasp gently at my approach, although it seemed a little too theatrical. <laughs> he probably knows I'm fine. <laughs> you caught me in the midst of some leisurely scribbles, it seems. How fair are you tonight, brother? I'm doing alright, how about you? Or alive, at least in the figure sense. Or I have been having some uh, adventures. <laughs> I want to say this one. These two are nice. This is also polite and I also want to say- I want to ask him how he's doing. I'm doing alright, which is true. How are you? How about you? Ah, oh, a little sore from all this writing. Three fingers hold the pen, they say, but the whole body works and aches. You came to ask something of me, though. Am I not correct? Come, what's on your mind? I have questions about you. About something else. <laughs> about someone else? Well, what about Andre? Ah yes, the father of secrets. He speaks of the future, yet remains firmly rooted in the past, where he believes the truth lies buried. Such a mentality frightens me. He and his followers do the 
bidding of ghosts, whis that whisper how we must all become the same. But if you hang on to the past, you die a little every day. Mm. Oh, something that happened recently. Someone tried to assassinate Randall recently. A dangerous move. His power would greatly increase after his death. Oh? Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. I was like, maybe it's a martyr, and then I saw the word, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Little is more compelling and easily abused than a martyr. I met this human named Lazarus in the sewers. Oh? What did you think of him? He's weird. He's an absolute monster, but Sharice wanted to turn him. Or, something about him is very compelling, or, I'm not really sure, he's a bizarre person, or, I think he's as fascinating as he is damaged. To be honest, I'm not really sure. I think he's crazy, but at the same time, like, there has to be something for Sharice to be like, I want to turn him, other than him being powerful. Not really sure. He's a bizarre person. Not so bizarre with context. Lazarus is neither the first nor the last of his kind, so whether you admire or despise him, I suggest you learn from his story. I will. About something else? I think that's all for now. Very well. We'll see each other again soon, I'm sure. Does that mean... Um, Heath isn't gonna be at the bar today? Should I just go to the laboratory? Cause I don't... I don't have anything new to talk about with Heath if the only things we can talk about is uh, Lazarus and... Andre. And I already did that last time. I already went to the- should we just- you know what? Let's go to the avatar at least once in this playthrough. <laughs> the moment I stepped into the club, I noticed it was much louder than before. There was a live band performing tonight, blasting their music through the loudspeakers as the crowd listened and danced. Listen to the band. Listen to the band. If that's the only thing I can do today. Let's relax. Let's see what we encounter this time. Figuring I'd stick around to watch the band a little while, I wandered closer to the stage. They were finishing up a song as I arrived, and some enthusiastic cheers rang out soon after. Hello everyone, thank you for coming tonight. A woman with short white hair and a bass guitar, probably the band's leader, greeted us through her microphone. We're the Outstars, and here's our force of uh, uh, fuck. <laughs> and here's our cover of Force Fed by the Gen Genitor. Oh fuck! Don't. I'm not gonna say that word. Bye. As the drummer kicked off into a heavy beat, and the singer began to growl the lyrics while plugging her bass. She bared her fangs in a wide, devilish grin. It sent a delighted ripple through the audience, rousing cheers from both the mortals and the vampires hidden among them. Wow, they're really invested in costumes since their last show, huh? Yeah, and I heard something about a meet and greet later. We should stay and try to get some pictures with them. Two humans next to me shouted over the music, bouncing in excitement. I hear they're only for selected fans, but maybe we'll get lucky. I hope so. I'd love to hang out with them. If I were you, I wouldn't go off alone with any of the band members or stay silent and wander away from the crowd. Mm, the thing is, they, they there's always that possibility of them getting addicted. So I'm just like, <laughs> oh, this is so hard for me to pick. I was wait. I need to check out my stats. <laughs> stats. God, the fact, the fact that I'm still like so in the middle of this determined reserve shit is fucking mind blowing in my head. God. If I were you, I wouldn't go off alone with any of the band members. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? As the two fans gave me bewildered looks, the singer's eyes suddenly met mine. She gave me a long, ferocious stare, as if to warn me away from her groupies and probably potential snacks. But by the time our gazes broke away from each other, I realized the humans had vanished. Well, if nothing else, at least they'd probably get some autographs to compensate for being dinner. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, like, if they still do it, then... I don't know, fuck, fuck. Okay, forget it. 
Leaving the humans to their potential fate, I turned away from the stage, slipping back towards the main dance floor. Beat the club. That was interesting. I left the nosy interior of the club, returning to the streets. Wait, I could go? Saturnalia. <laughs> what? Oh my god, is this like the last time we're gonna be able to do anything? So, it's letting us like, go everywhere? I thought it would be something better if I actually started going to the laboratory regularly. Maybe, I don't know. <clears throat> the bar was almost entirely empty. All I saw were a few vampires huddled reclusively by themselves, and one unsuspecting human playing pinball in the corner. Over at the counter, Heath stood with a cigarette hanging absently between his lips, staring at the row of bottles. Talk, talk, go talk to Heath. Heath. Heath, I'm alive. Antonio. He stared at me for a long moment, his features stricken with worry. I'm fine. I heard about what happened. I'm so relieved that you're alright. I'm glad too. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it, honestly. Or I had a feeling it might happen again. Or, yeah, the only thing they hurt was my feelings. <laughs> That's true, though. <laughs> I have a feeling it might happen again. Don't give me that look. You know it's gonna happen again. I've been a target now. I hope somebody can end this war before it does. Oh. <laughs> Let me hug him. He squeezed his eyes tightly shut, digging his fangs against his bottom lip. Well, I'm so happy you came here in person, and I can see for myself that you're alright. Were you just stopping by for a drink after what happened, or did you want to ask me something? Some questions about you. Let's talk about someone else. Anything that happened recently. I just want to talk to you. That's all for now, I think. Mm. I think I'll go make a drink then. Good night, Antonio. Uh, I don't know why I stumbled through that one. Good night, Antonio. Reaching to pull out a cigarette, Keith reluctantly turned away. Do you have a crush on me? Do you care about me very much? I can't wait. Oh my god. I can't wait to do his route. I'm so excited. Ready for the heartbreak. <laughs> I left the bar's quiet ambiance returning to the street. Time had passed quickly and the night was already almost over. I to head back. I wish I could talk to David. That's fine. As I returned to my room, I felt slightly unnerved from my earlier brush with death. The sight of all those bodies stayed fresh in my mind. What if our places had been reversed, and my curse was lying there right now, while they walked free? If not for my mysterious saver, the situation might have come true. The thought didn't give me any comfort as I huddled in for another dreamless rest. Oh, ring ring! Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here, guys. Thanks you for joining me. I'll see you in the next part. Um, wh where will this story take us? I don't know. I'm very nervous. We'll see how it goes. Bye.